Uh, criticism continues to pile up against that emergency summit and its resolutions with Fitch joining Moody's and saying that it does nothing to help ratings. For insight and analysis, we're joined by Investec Asset Management's Thanos Papasavas and by our Europe editor, David Tweed. David, uh, let's start with you. What is Fitch's angle? in terms of its criticism. What here. they're saying, what they said when they came out with their comment last night, was that they're worried that there's too much of a gradualist approach coming in from the European Union leaders and what they really should have been trying to do was a, was a, was a, was a, was a big bang solution. And this is obviously, they say it's going to affect their outlook for growth because their GDP forecast for next year, they're looking at something like 0.4% uh, for, uh, for next year and 1.2, 1.3% for 2013. Now, if they hadn't adopted the gradualist approach and they'd have come up with a comprehensive package, what they're saying is they would have been able to increase those growth forecasts. So it's all about growth, which is obviously very important. But I also think there's something rather interesting. We spoke to Nick Sargent, this was Susan Lee, our Hong Kong anchor spoke to him earlier, and he says that actually there could be a silver lining in the fact that you've got all these ratings agencies, uh, we've had S&P Moody's and now Fitch, coming out and saying what they're planning to do. My expectation right now is they kind of telegraphing. It reminds me, Susan, of um, in August when S&P was watching the uh, U.S. Uh, deliberations over the debt ceiling and said, if you don't come up with a uh, grand compromise, we'll downgrade you. Now, of course, they did that in a week. I think this one will take a little bit longer, but I, I think you have to be prepared that there will be across the board downgrade. But what he's saying also is the fact that because all of these are being telegraphed, it's getting priced into the market, which means that when they come around, maybe it's not going to be such a big, uh, a big market uh, uh, reaction. That brings us to Thalos Papos Savas of Investec Asset Management. What do you think? What's priced into the markets? I think a lot of that has already been priced in, but more crucially, the stigma of losing the, the AAA rating has gone away since the U.S. lost the AAA in, in, in the summer. That's the first point. The second point is that even though the spreads may be maintained high versus the bonds for the countries which do lose their rating, it still is a relatively attractive absolute level of yield, and especially if we're talking about the EFSF, which was one of the concerns that it could lose its AAA. Attractive AAA's. if you have faith that this group of 17 or 17 plus are going to manage to, to stay together and they're not going to walk away at, at the first uh, you know, difficult hurdle. Well, I, I do believe that, there's a, that there is obviously a probability of, of this unbundling and, and breaking up, but the, the cost of unraveling the whole Euro project is still so much more severe than sticking together. That uh, our, our case, our central case, is for them to pursue, and as we've seen recently, they have been taking such more serious steps in dealing with the issues, well, especially what you, the politicians. What do you make, actually, about the results from the European summit last Friday, Thursday and Friday? I mean, the Fitch they're talking about them having too much of a gradualist approach. It is gradualist, but, but I do think that we have to uh, assess it from the, the right way, and that is the politicians need to deal with the situation. And I'm totally in agreement with the, with the ECB, with the Bundesbank, that it should not impose moral hazard by allowing um, intervention and bringing the yields lower. It is about the politicians making the necessary changes, and that will take time. But the speculation in the markets is that the ECB is still going to have to come in, and it's still going to end up being the lender of last resort, that it's going to have to ultimately be the one that solves the crisis? No, I don't think so. I think, I think they will maintain their distance in terms of the political um, involvement and, and they will allow the further pressure to, to continue putting pressure on the politicians to take action. That's exactly what they did over the last month and I think they will pursue that, that strategy. Yeah, it's interesting actually to see what the ECB has been doing because, I mean, the, you know, looking at it, it was Mario Draghi who actually came up with the phrase fiscal compact. And uh, in a way, the ECB seems to be the, 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 the institution which is pushing the most and drawing the politicians after. Very, very much so. I think that it's sort of a, an axis between Mrs. Merkel, Jens Weidmann from the Bundesbank, Mario Draghi from the ECB has been changing this, this recent development over the last month and a half. And that has been crucial to, to install back the pressure to the politicians to take the necessary action. But we're seeing um, uh, you know, a lot of people looking at their dollar, uh, euro forecasts as well just lately, especially in the light of that interest rate cut that came from the yes. ECB. Are you, have you changed your outlook? No, we, the euro? We're, 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 sort of, we're still positive the euro. We're overweight the euro. 
But I think the reason uh, why the euro has been weakening more recently is not so much the underlying political uncertainty, which has been with us for the last 18 months. It's more about the underlying economics. And the, it was the drop in confidence and sentiment which caused this sort of uh, gradualist weakening approach. But we do expect that to turn around as the political situation is resolved in, 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 in 2012. So not only do you think this is going to work, you think the fundamentals economically are better in Europe and for the euro and they are for the US. How can you say that when growth figures are, are as different as they are? Because clearly the, the whole European euro currency project was, was not sustainable in its format previously with only monetary and currency union. What we needed is the fiscal union, albeit so maybe some political union at the end of that as well. But now the politicians and the policymakers have addressed this key structural problem of the, e, of, of, of the euro. And if they do manage to get their fiscal house together alongside monetary and single currency, this is really the, the beginnings of something which will be structurally there, very attractive. There are a couple of big ifs there, though, aren't there? I mean, if they do manage to get it together, and also, I mean, at the same time, we're seeing that in Spain and Italy, they're putting into place rather tough austerity measures. I mean, that's going to have a huge impact on the economic outlook for Europe now. It, it will have an economic, uh, it will have a, a huge impact, but also at the same time, if those appropriate prudent fiscal measures have been taken through, there's no reason why the ECB could not conduct a quantitative easing program, albeit buying bonds at a pro rata basis, so it would be predominantly bonds, but generally uh, ease the economic situation quantitatively, as long as the politicians are taking the appropriate fiscal route. Well, so I want to put to you a question that we're putting to a few of our guests, a number of our guests, and that is, do you think that big banks are a cure or a curse when it comes to the global economy? In terms of the risk, the systemic risk they have? Mm. Well, I think clearly there is risk to them, uh, but in terms of the dealing the banking sector, what we're seeing here is a total separation. Um, although the ECB is taking a much more cautious approach in terms of the dealing with the politicians, it has been extremely aggressive, and this is where the big bazooka came to in terms of dealing with the liquidity which is provided for the banks, especially in the, in the European um, sector. So it is there, the risk is very significant, and that's why I think the ECB has been very proactive in dealing with that, at the same time separating the, the moral hazard potential risk Tough of the politicians. Here. Definitely. All right, thanks very much. Hannah's Papa Salvas, their fixed income and currency strategist at Investec Asset Management. Thanks for being with us. And David Tweed, our Europe editor.